Hello, welcome to another episode of Healing Visionaries. I'm very excited about today's program. We have Kate Griffiths and Kath Roberts with us. Welcome to both of you. Thank you. Kate, Kate is a, an author, foodie, firewalker, and mom who loves to explore new territory literally in the world and in the mind. She has extensive experience of coaching and facilitation, holding space for what wants to unfold. Her work with organizations, teams, and individuals is to help people find a true sense of direction using a variety of methods of which color is the most powerful. Using her unique color tool, she guides you towards a better understanding of what's stopping you from being your whole self and guides you on a new path to purpose, fulfillment, and joy. Welcome, Kate. Thank you for being here. It's a lot, delightful to be here. Kath Roberts is a color teacher of teachers, NLP master, Reiki teacher, systems coach, author, and speaker. In her work, she supports you to pinpoint your innate talents and gifts, then coaches you to a life of greater purpose, autonomy, and self-reliance. She combines an entrepreneurial outlook with her past background in headhunting and leadership in a corporate setting. Kath is all about making you the accent color in your life so you can live with a greater passion and make a difference in the world. She works in and uses the system of color mirrors to align you with your core nature as well as other modalities to shapeshift your reality. Based in Somerset, UK, she works online and travels extensively. I love her closing statement that it's never too late to be the person you want to become. Yeah. So welcome okay. to both of you. Thank you so much for being here and for your time to join us. It's great to be here. I'm, I'm really looking forward to this. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I've got a bunch of questions laid out um, for, for each of you to help our viewers understand what you're doing with color. I mean, for me, this is particularly exciting as a visual artist, but I know there are many forms that it, that it takes. And because we're focused on shamanism and healing arts, can you just give us um, a little bit of background about um, your concept of shamanism, how it's different from healing arts and how color plays a part in that shape shifting? Sure. So, so as you know, um, if we take a shamanic um, perspective, the healer is healing at the fourth dimensional layer of the body, the energetic level, which is the seat of the soul. And within the seat of the soul, of which the heart acts as the gateway, um, we start to access uh, deeper levels of consciousness. Um, a deeper sense of our own higher self, our light, and how we hold that light within our body so that we can effectively embody our heaven on earth and, and live in this moment, in this present moment, and create from this present moment. And so the shaman knows that everything is connected and that there is no separation from anything in the universe um, and in the same way, color is acting at deepening one's level of consciousness by working on the cellular memory. So working at that energetic level of the soul. And so what's actually happening is as we work with color, we're really accessing really the heart, uh, the feelings, the emotions, those layers, if you like, um, that we may have forgotten. Uh, that so, so often when people work with color, as um, Kate, you know, I'll never explain as well, that um, all of a sudden they may find that there's an old memory that comes up that they want to discuss or why they're tuning into a conversation that happened or a feeling in the body and so there's that connection being made if you like to the third dimensional physical body there's a visceral feeling that's been held and connected to as a result of color 
And maybe it's a good idea if I shut up now and allow Kate to sort of um, add, add to where I've started. <laughs> So I, I think partly what colour thanks Kath, uh, what colour does in many ways is to help people to see that there is no coincidence in life. So often when we start the spiritual journey, we don't necessarily see that actually energy is working with us and supporting us. And colour really facilitates that process. And then if if we like going back to the shamanic piece. Um, we often talk about all the elementals in shamanism and we exactly do the same in colour. So we have a set of spritzers, there's about 42 or so of them. And within that, you've got a fire spritzer, an air spritzer, a water spritzer, an earth spritzer, metal and wood. So it's just a different way of looking at many of the same things. And why I particularly like colour relates back to an NLP um, concept really which is that we learn all learn in different ways so some people are really visual other people are auditory and some of us are kinesthetic or a mix of those things and the lovely thing about color is because you're actually working with sprays and bottles they are kinesthetic so it allows people particularly if it's a face-to-face session to pick things up to connect to the energy in that bottle to make it more real in a way that just discussing something you can stay stuck in your head and the idea with all of this spiritual work is how do we integrate what we're learning and we move from our head to our heart and connect to that you know that those spiritual truths and I think that's really what colour enables us to do. And yeah, um, me one, one of the things we say is that this is a right brain system. And what we really mean by that is, is it's about accessing the unconscious yeah. because the unconscious speaks to us in feelings and in symbols and in pictures and images. And of course, it, it's then more easily uh, available for us to, to drop into that heart center and to differentiate between what is a feeling and what is an emotion. Because an emotion is something that at a certain point we've had a feeling and we've had a thought that has created, if you like, a judgment, um, a definition of what that feeling was. So um, that something happened and actually that caused me to feel rejected and hurt. Uh, and therefore, because I've created a thought around it, the emotion remains frozen in the energetic field. Mm -hmm. We're supposed to flow all of our feelings through the body. That's what enables us to stay in flow and to be in the joy of life and to be in love. Um, and of course, that's hard to do if we've got a lot of emotions that may say, well, you know, there's anger or frustration or, you know, the heavy stuff, essentially. And so it, it's a light touch way of helping us access those emotions i think it was picasso that says that colors are like features you know they it, it basically displays the range of emotions um I, I think another part of it um is if if we look at life often um in the old paradigm we talk a lot don't we about um doing um and and the importance of doing and achievements and success as if it's sort of you know one thing but also that you end up on that hamster wheel if you end up in that cycle of doing all the time and it, 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 you know if you, it's like the old adage if you have a to-do list yes you might cross three things off and then you suddenly have to add another 10 things on and that's really sort of depressing to live in that way and I think what colour well I know really colour helps us to kind of step off that treadmill really and get into that space of being and therefore enabling us to dream our life into being because we're in that sort of we've allowed ourselves to slow down for a moment and work out well what really matters to you what's really important here and to go back to Kath's point from earlier really um it's all about helping individuals to access their intuition we all have it but quite often because of the way we're taught in schools and and everything else that we've learned, we're taught to distrust that. 
And if you take the word intuition, actually, what does it spell? In tuition, because we're learning and growing and developing and evolving as spiritual beings. So everything we do, really, and in, in the work that we use with colour is giving people the inside out experience rather than the you know external back to why is this happening because the more we get into that expanded sense of self and shift consciousness because we've shifted vibrationally which is what the shaman's doing it's and this tool is is working in exactly the same way yeah. we lift vibration you know it's not you get what you want you get who you are so when we be love we get love yeah and and so we're helping people understand that and get absolutely the um the relative um truth of that so when somebody's bathing in an oil they're going to get they might hold an intention this is what i want to bring into my world bring into my life and yet they might get the opposite reflection of that that's not because there's something bad in that oil that's telling them that there's something wrong. The oil is bringing up the dissonance in their thoughts and their feelings, their reality consciousness. And it I just want to back up honest. for a minute. So Kate mentioned spritzers and you're talking about the bath oils. So this yeah. is not about painting with color. No. This, this no. is about <laughs> bottles of liquid color that you're using. Yeah. Okay, I just want our listeners to understand. Sacred so, oil. I'm going to show you a couple. Um, that I mean, I know Cass probably got some, but this is a spray. They look like this. And you just take the top off and you spray. And you can get an experience with that. And actually, what we found, because as you know, Colleen, we, um, one of our programs is called Colour Rocks. And it's an eight-week program we take into schools. And we found that actually the more work that we now do with young people, they really respond well to the sprays. Also, it doesn't mean they don't like the bottles, but they really connect to those and can have that shift in that moment. It's easier. And so that's also, and you'll find, you know, if you talk to different colour teachers, you know, we're both colour teachers, that actually they'll attract different kinds of people. So some, some people, you know, most of their clients want the sprays, for others they're mainly going for the bottles and for some it's a mix. It just depends also on your own energy, which is entangling with that of your clients as well. How does that spray work? Because once you spray it out, you don't see the color. No, so you spray it onto the palm of your hands um, take and take breath. three deep breaths in. But also with a lot of the sprays, not every single one, because as I say, there's over 40, but there's um, some meditations that you can use. So again, it's that whole piece about kind of going in, getting out of your head and connecting at that heart spiritual level so that you can connect to the essence of the spray. And of course, in again, back to an NLP language, um, it's an olfactory um, Yeah. Element. So we're tuning into a smell, and the smell may evoke a memory. Yeah. And and there are top notes, you know, on, in the essences. So not only are they are they getting a, a lovely smell, they're slowing their breathing down, they're getting into their heart center. They, it may, as I say, evoke a, a really positive memory that bringing to mind. And of course, we know the power of visualization and what that can do to lift people vibrationally. Yeah. Kath, you also mentioned shifting, and that's one of the questions I'm curious to hear from you about coming from the corporate background. What prompted your spiritual awakening and, and the desire to work in this area? <laughs> well, <laughs> that's a bit of a story. Um, if I go back, if I go back to when I was 27, I had a near-death experience. Mm -hmm. um, um, long story short, I spent 17 days in hospital and um, I cured myself. Um, in other words, I didn't have any medical intervention as such. And the doctors themselves thought that I had kidney poisoning. They couldn't understand that after 48 hours of having such a critical fever and temperature, they thought they were going to lose me. How I just came around 
and my um, through the ultrasound equipment that they used um, to test my kidney, everything clear. Um, but when I checked out of hospital, I was in a very weak situation because I'd lost a lot of weight. And physically, it took me a good few years to recover from that process. But even then, I would say I was sleepwalking through life because I, st I just carried on regardless in the same grind of life as one does. And, and I wasn't really listening, if you like, to my higher self, to my soul that was trying to get my attention. And um, so um, my next big wake up call came at 36 when I lost my father. And um, it wasn't unexpected. He'd been ill for, for many years with cancer. But what I noticed was that um, I was getting dreams um, and, and, and I would know things and they would come true. And it, it scared the hell out of me because I didn't know what was happening to myself. And so I just started to read all things, um, you know, in the esoteric metaphysical uh, areas, basically. And I started to understand that actually this is just a shift in consciousness. It's just my vibration changing. Um, and um, that got me started on wanting to learn more about the powers of the mind. Um, and I guess it was like my intuition was saying, you know, we, we're done with the corporate world now. It's, it's time to make a change. And that curious soul was wanting to go in a different direction. And she'd resisted, you know, for many, many years and kept doing the same old thing and getting the same old results. And then finally, it was just a case of no, no, this is calling me and it, and it won't, um, it won't quiet anymore. You've got to go and do this. And it was scary as hell, you know, because it's completely unknown. Yeah. Uh, but what an adventure, you know, uh, looking back and reflecting. Wow. That's, yeah, that's incredible. What, what was the, that shifted? What needed to shift in order for you to undertake oh. this work? Oh my God. I had that with my mind for a start off. So I was, you know, somebody who was always um, adept at acquiring knowledge. You know, I wanted to know how everything worked. I wanted to understand everything. And so that was, that was letting go of that, letting go of, of you know, the, the expectations around what people think, the judgments that you hold, you know, around what, well, what would somebody think about me if I'm doing this kind of work? It's a complete polar opposite, you know, and isn't it ironic? The more we step out of the judgments we hold about ourselves, the more we get the accolades, not because we're looking for them, but because we're just being ourselves and being authentic and loving what we're doing. But that took me, you know, quite a few years to, to work out. Right. Incredible. And Kate, how did you come into this kind of work? Well, it's always a story, isn't it? So I guess um, the short version of the story was I got into Reiki, so I'm a Reiki master as well, um, at a time probably, well, I guess 15 years ago. And my husband had got called up and was sent to Iraq. Um, and so he spent the year in Iraq and I went on a fair old journey, really um, working out what that actually meant to me. And I suppose a bit like Kath, I'd had an experience prior to that where I was looking, I mean, al always looking for answers. There must be something more to life than this, you know, mm -hmm. and going on that process. But I guess starting that Reiki journey back in 2004 was probably a shift into something else. Um, and then... It, it grew from there I, you know I had had my two daughters who are now nearly 12 and 13 and that made me really focus on you know do I want to be in PwC which is where I was based because <clears throat> although I enjoyed some of the work it's fairly demanding in terms of what it requires and did it actually sit with you know who I was becoming and that's when I decided it probably didn't so I became a coach and various other things um and 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 i guess when you go through that process because as Cass has already said i mean it is when you decide to set up and become self-employed especially i guess later on in life it's like wow how's that all going to work 
and how do I deal with the fear that brings up you know in terms of not knowing how much you're going to earn in any given month and what's going to happen and so that I guess naturally lent one to looking into that further reading more exploring more and then adding to so I mean I'd been a coach for a number of years when I got into color and I guess for me the cold color thing just added something that I couldn't unravel with my mind so that was a bonus in, in many respects but it provided a lightness so I couldn't understand it but it was very intriguing and that's what led me to want to know more and to continue the journey really. I, I think it's worth mentioning Colleen just to to add to what Kate was saying because she raised a, a point there. Colour for me and for many people that I've worked with and of course, in the collaborative work that Kate and I do, it's given us um, an ability to really access our creativity. Yeah. And I mean, levels that I don't think we ever appreciated we fully had around um, just bringing in new ideas and, and new projects, new, new tools yeah. um, that we teach with that we wouldn't, I don't think, have, have come up with if we'd not kind of been on this color journey. I love that color itself brought the creative ideas and new ways yeah. of thinking. Yeah. 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 Definitely. Well, I know we're going to go through an experience um, using me today, but um, before we start that, uh, I wonder if you can just talk a little bit more about how the color works to restore the harmony and evolve consciousness. So, so I think Kathleen, um, mentioned this earlier but I know we've talked about lots of stuff but if if you think why have we come to earth at the moment or why is anybody here it's because we want to experience the full range of emotions and feelings because when we live in oneness in spirit form then everything is love we understand that we're part of that but that's all we know and actually when we're here what we experience that are the vicissitudes of life in other words the ups and downs you know, the good times but also the o omg times as i like to think of them um and how do we be with that so it, on some levels and one thing i always like to say to people is just by working with color doesn't mean that you're going to just constantly live in a state of joy for the rest of your life you're still going to have moments where you think what is happening but what happens is it's like you're building the resilience muscle and you bounce back just that bit quicker because you see yourself going into that maybe third dimensional reality or getting involved in the drama or taking the role of the victim or the martyr or whatever it happens to be and go, actually, no, this doesn't serve me. And, and there's more to this than I'm seeing at the moment and, and not getting caught up in, you know, reacting to a situation. But the point that Kath was raising before is why I think colour is so powerful because it works at the energetic vibrational level as well. So things have happened to people. It may have happened to us when we were children, small, we didn't have, you know, we weren't fully developed. So we didn't have the, we didn't know how to deal with it. So we, we come up with a strategy that we then continue to use. And if you think at that age, it's like the software is being, you know, sort of developed. So our parents or those that cared for us are sort of um, instilling in us their own values or their own fears or their own sense of lack. We don't know that. That's the only reality that we know. But suddenly then we've got all of these unconscious programs, if you like, that lead to patterns and ways of behaving which don't always serve us. And I suppose what colour does is to just bring some of that it's like the oil, if you like, bringing the oil to the surface so we can look at it and go, really, is that what I really truly believe? Do I still want to live in this way or not? And if I don't, then how do I heal that and, 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 and move on so that we can allow more of the joy in? So we can't. saying, you know, the black holes in the energy system being healed up and cleansed so we can be at that higher vibration, really. Mm. We call the system, or, or rather the founder of the system, calls it colour mirrors for a reason. Because they're reflecting back to us what's actually going on inside of us. And actually, we also talk about the journey being the path of the master. 
And what is mastery? Mastery is being able to look at ourselves in the mirror because we've cleaned our own mirror. We've cleaned our face, should I say. And we look at ourselves. And then we also see that our reflection through others and vice versa. Yeah, so it's that it is an upgrade. It's upgrading our software, if you like, um, using the analogy that Kate, Kate was using. You know, the hardware might be the body, but the software is, is the energy field. And as we upgrade to bring more of the higher self, the light into the body so we can embody it down here and live heaven every day, um, the oils just act as enablers mm. in that regard and show us, as I say, where we might be in lack, where we might be in dissonance or where we're in resonance. And so the magic returns because as we slow life down, you know, and there's nothing more luxurious, frankly, the, in these days than sitting in a bath for 45 minutes with some <laughs> chilling out. I mean, how many women do that these days? How many women have time to do that? And yeah. Soils are glorious. I mean, you'll see some of the colors in a moment. But so to actually slow everything down, it amplifies or everything. So we can see everything almost in this colorful, high vibrational way. Well, Kath, if you would like to get started, let's give our viewers a mini experience of what this, how this works, what this looks like. Okay, so you asked it, well, we, we decided what we would do is, is use you as our, our guinea pig for today, and we were going to have a look at your soul path, Colleen. And so the way we actually do that is, 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 is a straightforward, um, we look at your date of birth and we add all of the numbers together and we get an read because we're looking at that from a numerological perspective and we know that you're a master number which was interesting a 33 6 and so even just looking at that level we can already establish that you are here to work with the heart and to be of service and to uh, really be bringing out emotional expression in others isn't that interesting and then this energy is, is actually about holding a higher vision for one's life and, and for others. And I can't think of anything better with what you're sharing here, you know, for your audience um, and, and how that is going to affect their lives um, in a positive way. But we, we look for, when we look deeper into color, we, we look at, okay, so what would the oils be that represent Colleen's soul path? And you indeed have four, because we also take your birthday, which you've told us is 12. So we look at that as a starter, and then we deduce that to a single digit, which gives us your second bottle, and then your soul path, which is 33, six. So we're gonna show you four bottles now. Kate will show you the first two, and I'll show you the second two. And we just wanna see first and foremost, what your reaction is. Is it what you thought it was? Okay. Let's <laughs> okay, so the very first bottle is the 12 bottle and just to give you a bit of a, a feel for that It's quite interesting because some of the words that Kath was using earlier when she talked about living heaven on earth We call this the heaven on earth bottle um, oh. So I'm going to just show, show that to you now Wow so oh really my gosh, it's got purple on top and red on the bottom. That's it. So what do you think about that one? Well, that's very, very interesting because I love that color combination and purple's my absolute first favorite color. Yeah. For everything. Yeah, it would be. <laughs> we can see why. <laughs> And wow. in that, but, but see, I have too much color theory from the 1800s in my mind because um, Steiner color theory, he, he calls that red and purple combination um, hellfire and, you know, if you want to make a painting or image that looks like hellfire, you know, damnation place, it's going to be that. So the fact that it's actually heaven on earth is really interesting reversal. That's it. Which, which actually, I like that much better. I think that in the 1800s, a lot of people uh, had some very narrow, you know, maybe, I mean, he was trying to be spiritually connected. He was spiritually connected. 
But anyway, I wouldn't okay. keep it a narrow description. So then, as Kath was saying, if you add the um, two numbers, the one and the two together, you get three, obviously, and that's your second bottle. And this is, I mean, I, I absolutely love this colour, so I'm slightly biased when it comes to this colour. It's probably the colour I wear the most often. Um, and it's, in, in some ways, it is about wholeness and um, that deep sensitivity that we often have. So I'm just going to show it to you and you can see what you think. And it's different because it's the same colour. Both fractions are the same. Oh. So it's a That's double very coral. Soft. Very pretty pastel. Yeah. Well, in fact, that's the color I saw in another visualization the other day um, on, on, on exercise <laughs> trans to transform some deep um, painful issue. It turned into that color. Wow. There you go. Yeah, it would do wisdom uh, in, in that regard. And we can we can unpack a bit more of that later. And so here is your third bottle. This is the 33. Ooh, wow. What do you think? Yeah, it's like a darker yeah. version of the one before. Mm. It's got that rose on top and then crimson with it. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So it's well, well, and then light. So it's pink, it's rose pink. Yeah, over a pale pink. And, and really what we're saying with the pinks is it's enlightened red. Um, and this is what we call the Christed energy, the 33. Mm. Uh, well, they're all red so far. And again, and red. <laughs> pale pink and pale pink. Yeah, enlightened red, enlightened red. And isn't that interesting? Because, you know, you're doing a series on shamanism. You know, it's all about Mother Earth and Mother Earth is red. Yeah. Know, and it's that nature and you're a Virgo right right it's all about the earth you know so there is a connection again the oil connect astrologically and um, we do have certain oils that are connected in with the planets um so so the, the Kate showed you Jupiter you know is the planet of expansion and possibility and knows no limitations so there's a real business around the and there's a real connection between that, interestingly, those two, as you call them, pastel colours, because as, as Kath's just said, the three bottle is around, you know, about creativity and what's possible. And in its highest level, the six bottle is about, you know, what's my ideal and what's, you know, in a, what's the ideal world that I want to create. So there's a real synergy, if you like, between those two energies, you know, they work very well together and in harmony, really. Wow. So with those bottles, um, I would just spray them. No. What do, you two, what, what do somebody do with There's two ways them? you can work with them. Um, if, you know, you sometimes... Pulse points. Yeah. Oh, so you wear it. Okay. Yeah, because sometimes people don't have a bath. So we would bath, normally bathe in the bottles, but if you don't have a bath, you know, some people just have showers or what have you, then you can either put it on your pulse points, as Kath was saying, or anoint yourself with it, or, you know, massage it in, you know, wherever you feel directed to do that. Or okay. if you want the real, you know, real experience in terms of sort of going to the depths of it is to pour the entire bottle into a bath having set your intention and then as I was saying earlier sit in it for 45 minutes to an hour and just see what emerges and we always say encourage people to do that at night time so that there's going to be nothing happening after you you know you have the bath get out pat yourself down go to bed so that allows your unconscious to speak to you so then if you dream it's really important to capture those dreams in your notebook, even if they don't make sense to you, then, then you could come back to us and we would talk you through what that, you know, actually means and what's shifting for you. Cause some, you know, that's part of the, what we're doing really. Oh, that's yeah. amazing. 
I, I always feel let down with the, with the bath, the normal bath, because I want more visions. I want some meaningful experience. I think the pour the whole bottle in it sounds like the best, best thing to do. Now, one of the things that um, goes on in the soul path or what we can start to see when we look at different color combinations we see the soul's journey and the different lifetimes that you've had yeah. we see the spiritual lessons we also see the connection to very specific chakra points um and so i think kate wanted to talk about which chakra yeah. yeah or yeah so, so so basically one of the things that we do well, there's two things. Firstly, perhaps if I take with the first bottle, um, one of the things what we do when we're doing a soul path reading is we also look at uh, the, the shadow, so what sits behind um, each bottle. And you, you'll understand this from Goethe's color wheel, you know, that there are complementary colors. So with this first bottle of red and purple, actually what you have sitting behind that is yellow and green, yeah? Um, and for us, anyone that has yellow and green in their field, and I, I can relate to this because I have yellow and green in mine, is it, that relates to a Catha lifetime. Um, so Catha was saying about, you know, previous lifetime. So I don't know if you know much about the Cathas, but they were around in the 12th and 13th century, um, deeply spiritual religious people, and they made women priests. Um, and the Catholic Church decided that this was quite, you know, shocking in many respects and was disrupting the power, you know, the way power was in those days. So the Pope and a number of the uh, barons got together and said, we're not having this and basically crushed the Catholic rebellion as they saw it and, you know, burnt these people at the stake. And the importance of that is that if you have those colours in your field, you have probably had a Catholic lifetime, which means to a degree there's more persecution, potentially, that you're having to clear out because of what's happened in the past. It may have nothing to do with what's happening right now in this lifetime, and it's linked to, you know, where, where you've come from. So that, that's something to, to, just to think about. So yeah, I definitely know that's true about yeah. this is not the first lifetime that i've been doing this work so. no you're a really old soul you yeah. have loads of lifetimes um and you go right back to atlantis um yeah. shown in kate's second bottle that um, she showed you sitting behind that is turquoise and turquoise is the atlantean lifetime that's the second time I've heard this now. Oh, well, pay attention. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But very quickly, because I'm conscious we don't have a lot of time, or just if you take what we were saying about the green and the yellow and what Kath has just said about the turquoise sitting behind your um, coral bottle, that, um, well, if we start probably with this one, so this is red and coral so it's a combination of your first two bottles yeah now I'd, what do you think of that one you need coral so it's got yellow in it it's got a little bit so the, this is the coral bottle can you see that the top is coral oh like okay and yeah entire coral. And, and it's got red as it has in the bottom of that one do you see that now right Okay. Yeah, I love it together. It's like right. harmonious. Yeah. There's no real discordance in any of these combinations. Speaks to visual artists. That's lovely. <laughs> so for now us I'm about yourself. Exactly. Oh, right. That's nice, but it does go back to us. Yeah, and, and that, that, that bottle represents the root chakra for us, okay? So you know about the root chakra. So as Kath was saying earlier about, you know, you're an earth sign, Mother Earth is red. So in all of that, we would say it's the, what's important in that sort of, in red and in the root chakra is how do we connect to the earth? How do we connect to 
our mothers, you know, what's the flow like? And often those are some of the things that you start to get into when you explore root chakra issues. And then I'm just doing this really quickly, but if we then look at the, the complementary, you know, you get obviously the complementary to coral is turquoise, the complementary to red is green. And so you get this bottle here, which is... Uh, I immediately feel not attracted to that somehow. And I like the colors, but I don't feel... You don't like them as much. They're not as powerful. Yeah. Yeah. So you're not, you don't want any love in your life then. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, no. I'm, I'm joking. <laughs> it, it, it relates to... D4, so the sh is the heart chakra bottle. Oh. And people, and, and, and the reason that I'm just exploring this with you rather than Kath is that I have a similar colour pattern in my life. So it's that swing between making sure we've got the, all the physical needs, survival issues met in the root chakra and knowing that actually the way to do that is through love. But obviously if... if if it's not happening, then we can flip back into fear of, oh gosh, am I going to be able to survive? Am I going to be able to provide for myself? And we switch off the, the love. So there's a kind of, not yin and yang, but there's a, those two go very much together. And in terms of, well, where do we come from on that continuum and how we respond to life? But what's, what's exciting um, in your hand, so to speak, is um, when I look at this bottle, which is your, you know, six energy, which is the pale pink. And I look at Kate's bottle that she showed you, the 12, which is the violet. If I mix violet and pink together, I get the enlightened heart chakra bottle, which looks like this. Oh. Okay, so much lighter. And so you're here to transmute and transform energetically that bottle you didn't like too much into this because it's the <laughs> promise of your soul path's journey. You transform. It's the deep spiritualization of deep-seated mother issues. And as you step into your feminine wisdom and you feel your feminine unconditional love and you bring that out into the world, you know, it heals everything. It shifts everything in terms of your connection, your ancestral connection, and how one feels about that. And let me tell you, it's connected. And that relationship that you hold with the ancestral um, pattern in, is in the feminine. Through the feminine line is connected to an Atlantean connection. And also what you were processing when you were in utero, um, in, in your mother's womb, your mother's thoughts and feelings um, in relationship to the feminine. And so just interesting for you to be aware of that um, and how that may impact you and your ability to feel, you know, fully connected in the feminine as well as the masculine and, and what that does um, and what it brings up. Because the biggest um, spiritual lesson, if you like, um, out of all of it, I mean, even though, of course, as Kate rightly says, the root chakra is about feeling safe and no judgment. As we hold no judgment on anything, we stay in this neutral zone. We stay in our pain and we focus on what we want. We bring more of what we want towards us. When we can love our work in the heart chakra, you know, then... I guess we're in, we hold that higher vibration and people want more of us or want, you know, to be around us because actually it's joyful. But equally, yours is in the sacral chakra, um, which is that coral bottle. And it's a lesson in forgiveness. And mostly the forgiveness is around forgive yourself. And you may not even have any conscious awareness of what that is. Actually because it's just lifetimes and lifetimes and lifetimes of patterning and processing that all of us are going through and clearing. Yeah. Um, as we're I all feel that. I'm definitely aware of it, even in this lifetime. <laughs> yeah. So my transmutation will be in, I'm trying to move to the heart chakra and those colors. Yeah. 
and eventually to hold this, the enlightened heart chakra, to be of service to humanity, service in the violet, unconditional love in the pink. How does somebody know where they are and where they're trying to, you know? Great question is uh, how that is reflected in your life right now, how you feel in your body every day, every moment, um, and what you have in your life that reflects that back to you that says, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of 70% of the way there, or, oh my God, no, I'm 30% of the way there. Only you truly know that in yeah. your heart. And then that's one of the reasons in some ways why we work with colour, because then like you had a visceral reaction, didn't you, to each of your bottles, if you think about the ones that we showed you, the ones that you really liked and the ones you thought, mm, less interested in that. And that's also part of the clue and the connection, which is why we like working with colour, because it, you can't fake it. It's just that that's how you feel about that particular bottle. That shows you, you know, where you are or perhaps where you need to go as opposed to anything else you know so that's that's the, the the beauty of it really it's another checkpoint rather than just the words or the coaching or what have you and and that comes from you not from the coach right right that's really great thank you for that experience you're welcome i'm definitely oh, order my four bottles <laughs> so should i get the heart bottle also if you know to help me get there or what do i do for that part well i suppose i mean what i i mean cast may have a different view but i always think it's important to start with your soul path bottles like you were saying because that starts to shift things and then if you want to do more of the work you might look at the shadow the ones that sit behind it and, you know, ultimately, I think what, what we were showing you there, what you know, specifically Kath was showing you is this is the promise, you know, you do the work because you're, this is where you're ending up at. And you're already starting to do that. That's why you're doing this series. Well, it's so amazing. You know, it's about being of service, of being in that space of unconditional love. And then it's about how can I hold that for longer, you know, regardless of what's happening on the surface. And the thing is, because we, you know, we've already showed you the color combination, so you don't actually need to order the heart chakra because it's already held behind the four bottles that you've got. Yeah. That you've got. So you're actually, you, whether you like it or not, you're doing the heart chakra and the root chakra the minute you bathe in each of those bottles. Yeah. Right, because those colors are there. Yeah. Well, Thank you. That was incredible. And I know you prepared some, some gifts for the viewers too. Um, but each of you has a little something. Do you want to tell us about, about that? And we'll of course put the links on, on underneath the video on the page. Oh. Do you want to go first? <laughs> sure. sure. <laughs> um, so um, I have, <coughs> I prepared um, a 15 page guide for those who are interested in wanting to understand more um, and go deeper with this work. So that's just a free gift that you can download and read at your leisure. And I'm also offering a 25% discount on a soul path reading. So, and typically they, um, they're an hour and I do those online. And if you want to then get started with oils then those are purchased um, separately afterwards, but yeah, I would have a look at the soul path journey and then reveal more information. Wow, thank you. And Kate, you have also a, a quiz and some yeah. colors. Yeah, so, so, so for, if you're interested in finding out more about color and you want to do it in a different way, I recommend that you take the quiz. It doesn't take very long. There's a video on my homepage on the website and you can just go through and it just tells you a bit more perhaps about your patterns and you know some of who you are and it's a taster of course it's not you know we can be all of these things but it's where perhaps you predominantly are and often what people find is oh yeah that's the color I like the most out of these three colors There's, there'll, there'll be something in it and then again if you're interested then to find out more then you can get in touch and we can explore that further. Thank you. That is super great for everybody to get started and 
experience some of this. Thank you so much for your time and for being with us today. Is there anything else that you want to say that we haven't covered in closing? No, I think. No, I think uh, I think that's been rich and enjoyable, and I hope it gives people on the line just just more insight that there's always more available here. The more we start to open up to you know, that wise self, oh my God, life just takes on greater meaning, more color, more joy, and it, it really doesn't have to be a struggle. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing with us. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you.